Right, hi everyone. I have finished all the leaves on this page um, and um, obviously here it is to show you. Hopefully you've done the same thing. I've just noticed that I have forgotten those holly berries. Good. Okay, so what I was going to do is add a little bit of white pen in some areas just to make the leaves look a little bit shiny because I think that sometimes that can just lift um, a picture up a little bit more. So I'm just going to use my white Posca and I'm going to show you, I shall zoom in a little bit actually because I think otherwise you may not see the light shining off some of the areas. I've also um, fixed the um, camera. Um, I'm just going to do that on the scrap piece first. Oh, I've got a huge blob of paint out there. So that's why you do, you do that on the scrap bit of paper. Um, I realised what was happening with the camera was I had fiddled with the um, tripod and uh, I'd forgotten so the height was a bit wrong which means it was a bit out of focus so I'm really sorry I think that's the last two videos would have been out of focus so I'm sorry hopefully I have now fixed it I'm being a bit random really and just doing where I think the leaves might be shiny so if you think holly and ivy they're quite shiny and I think it just makes them look a little bit um, more interesting um, by having a little bit of shine added to them. That looked like it could have done with some burnishing. But never mind, I can do it on all of the leaves just because I'm getting a bit carried away. Poinsettia leaves aren't that shiny. Uh, I think I'll leave the mistletoe. I'm just getting... Oh, and you couldn't see what I did over there. There we go. Sorry. Gosh. And there. You could put a little bit of white on the holly berries. You're going to want a thinner pen. Um, probably use a jelly roll, number five, for that. And just do it on the top where the red is a little bit thicker, like that. Um, I can't do it on the other one because I forgot to colour it in. But hey-ho, we're just going to go over here. And we've got these sort of beads here. And I'm going to do those in a silver so they look like these... And I seem to remember we used the charcoal. I'm going to use exactly the same technique as we use for this. So just going around the edge and trying to leave a little bit in the middle. So when it's a larger area like here, you can do a dark outline and then fade it in towards the middle, excuse me, like that. Now what I have noticed is that... Um, there's a bit of a candy cane here, and I'll show you that as well. Don't take too long. Now I'm colouring this quite quickly. Try not to put my hand down in the white pen. Probably did. Whenever I use pen, I seem to get it all over me, even if I've hardly touched it. I just, I'm just a messy person, I think. I have found a way to use pastel that's a bit cleaner, and I don't get it all over me. So I need to be a bit more careful with pen, especially as I'm getting some gel pens um, for Christmas. So uh, I need to learn how to use them better. So let's just pull that into shot. Um, let's grab a red. I'm going to do a red and white striped candy cane. I'm going to make the... Oh, I've just sharpened off the end of my pencil. Let's try that again. I'm going to use the true red, which is what we've been using for the berries and things. Um, because uh, I think it will tie in and it's for me it's the right colour so here it is true red and what I do for a candy cane is do a lot each side lots of layers and fade it towards the middle like that I was going to tell you a funny story actually I went to uh, now we've got our robin I'm going to do him He's got his red tummy, so I'm going to do that in this red. I'm just going to try and do a light layer to start with. So I was walking to meet a friend this morning, and at the end of my road is quite a smart house. It used to be, it's an old, big old house. There, it's nice. And um, the, um, there's a lovely couple living there, as far as I know. I'm going to use the charcoal grey for his face. And uh, they... Um, Anyway, I was walking up the road past their house and there was this awful, loud, raucous, squawking noise, as loud as you like. 
and everyone that was walking around the area, there's quite a few people walking around, I'm going to do the uh, tail and wing. I should zoom in a little more to show you because this is not just plain colouring. And uh, so we're going to have it darker here near the body. So I'm going to do a few more layers. And it was squawking. And I had a look and eventually I found where it was. And it was sitting on the chimney of this really smart house. And not only was it shouting really loudly, it was a seagull or a gull of some sort. It had its head poked down the chimney. <laughs> so it was shouting into this really posh house. It just really tickled me that there's this really smart house and there's this raucous seagull shouting down the chimney pot. Oh, made me giggle. Oh dear, I told my friend she thinks I'm mad. She thought it was funny. She. <laughs> and I don't know what colour beaks robins have. I think we'll do it slightly muted yellow. Oh, I nearly knocked my slightly muted yellow on the floor. I'm going to do the sapphire yellow. I just don't want it to be as bright as the stars, which are the... Um, lemon yellow so anyway i told my friend but it was really lovely this morning it was beautiful it was cold it's not really showing up is it well maybe you might want to do that a different color i don't know it's too late now i am wondering whether to do a little bit of gray on each side of this candy cane i know we're going back and forth i'm going to use my elephant gray it's a paler gray and what i do is to do a sneaky line here and here it's the tiniest bit and it helps to make it look more shiny. Anyway, um, I, I was waiting for my friend. She was a little bit... No, I was early because I left my house early because my husband was getting ready for work. And uh, it's nice for him sometimes just to have a little bit of privacy and quiet while he's just getting his head together and making sure he's got all his stuff. If you talk to him and distract him, it gets a little bit... Um, distracted and he can't quite cope with getting ready so I thought I'll just leave because he's getting ready and I'm ready and I'll just go so that's fine so I was waiting at the end of her road where we were had arranged to meet because we we're going to go into town and have a coffee which we did and uh, I'm going to do this base of stocking in purple I'm going to choose this amethyst purple and I'm just going to do a gentle medium pressure coating of it all around the stars so uh, I was waiting at the end of her road now I was standing on a really busy A road, so it's quite busy. Nice wide pavement, not dangerous. I had my back to the traffic because I was looking down her road. Now, on over the back of her road is a hill, and up the hill it was absolutely gorgeous. There was the sun was still rising to my left and um, slightly sparking in my eyes. But the hill she was up behind her house. There were autumnal trees and beautiful browns and oranges and there was a light mist in certain areas and I was there for about five minutes because I, as I say I was early and as I was standing there I was watching the mist slowly lift up off the fields. It was so pretty and the sun was catching certain parts of the fields. It's lovely. I just, where we live we are so lucky. It's so pretty and uh, I was just feeling so lucky and happy. And luckily it wasn't that cold. I, uh, I had my um, thick coat and gloves on anyway. But uh, it was quite damp this morning. So it wasn't too cold. So you can see we've just got a light layer. Oh, I just scratched my arm. Sorry, I've got some eczema. Ugh. I, I get it when the central heating goes on. It sort of seems to dry my skin out. I need to... Uh, I've got some cream. I just need to put it on. So... I want to do a darker layer on the edge of the stocking and then gently fade that into the towards the centre and what I'm hoping that will do is make it look more rounded because it's stuffed with presents it's not flat so um, I'm hoping that it will sort of help to give that illusion that's got all these lovely presents inside it and then we'll see if it works and down towards the toe. I used to always put a pound coin in the toe of my children's stocking. They could pop it in their money box. But, uh, sorry, Father Christmas used to be asked to put a pound in the toe of their stocking. But uh, not so much now. They're... Uh, they're getting older 
when you're 16 it doesn't seem like very much money it's quite hard to buy presents for 16 year olds i've been trying to think it's really annoying as well i asked my son what he wanted and he suggested all things i'd already bought him that i was hoping would be a surprise i was like oh no and I was like, oh. at least it shows that i know what he wants or needs but a little bit irritating but they are getting expensive computers i just wanted a few extra ideas really now i'm hoping that that looks a little bit more um, bulky that i'm stocking now and i just want to add one sorry i had to stop and wipe my nose under this bit here the sort of top bit it would we'd have a little bit of a shadow so i'm just doing a darker bit there Okay, now the stars I want to do really bright yellow, and I'm wondering whether to do them the same bright yellow as I did the ones in the sky, or whether that's, no, I know, this is going to, this is the turmeric yellow, it's a little bit orangey, so uh, it's, uh, it's going to be bright, but I think it'll work with the purple, I think orange and purple work, my son disagrees. I think they do. I used to have a house with a purple carpet and an orange wall and it worked. But I'm hoping this will look quite yellowy. I'm going to do this quite hard because I want them to look quite bright. I'm really not sure what colour to do the top bit though. It's going to work with this. I'm finding these Arteza pencils aren't laying down as well on this paper as they do in other books. I'm not really sure why. I have been using the Arteza Expert pencils just recently in another picture and maybe it's that I've got used to using those and I haven't quite got the technique right. Um, now the purple yellow. I'm thinking maybe a um, hmm, a different shade of purple. I'm going to grab the eggplant purple. Oh, I keep dropping it there. There it is, eggplant purple. I'm going to sharpen it because we've got to get around all these little dots. And I want to do a similar thing where I'm making it darker on the edges compared with the middle. So I'm going to start at the edges because where the, oops <laughs> i don't know where that went it flicked <laughs> um so it's easier to do a darker bit while it's sharp so i'm gonna go in this side as well and do a sharp bit and then do a little bit less trying to work out how to collect my parcel. I was due a parcel today, so I left a message with the delivery company to ask them to leave it in a, to try the neighbours and if they weren't in, if they could leave it in a specific place. Got home to a note saying they'd taken it back to the sorting office. Or something. And I know that two of my neighbours, direct neighbours, were in. I didn't ask them to collect it. I didn't specifically ask them to look out for it or anything. I wouldn't do that. So it wasn't left in the place I asked or anything. It was just taken back to the office. Now, the sorting office is about 45 minutes walk away from here, which is quite some distance. And tomorrow, I'm really busy. So uh, I'm not going to be able to get it. It's just slightly irritating, but hey-ho. Um, dots. Should we go for a lighter yellow? What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Um, um, that one didn't. Let's go for the jasmine yellow. I can't remember. I'm sure we've used this on something, but I can't remember where. Because it's, it's in a different pile. Oh, we used it for the mistletoe. It's really pale, isn't it? It's like a cream. I think that's going to work. I'm looking at our other items, thinking about what colours to do those while I'm colouring in these dots. This is a bit of a mad stocking, isn't it? There we go. Okay, I'm trying to um, keep my pencils together so I know which ones I've used, so I can put them in the description for you. So that's those. Okay, gift. The gift I'm going to do orange. I've already decided that. I'm going to use the 
orange, any shade of orange would work. So I'm just going to do it all in a as even an orange layer as I can get. Hmm. I find it interesting that this stocking has a wrapped gift here, but it's also got an unwrapped things in it, which seems a little odd. Anyway. stocking is the most exciting bit of the day. I think it because just everything starts then. Um, I'm going to do the girl's crown. Actually I'm going to do the girl and then think about the ribbon colour because I can't think of what to do at the minute. So I'm going to start her off with some camel brown on either side of the crown. You could do this in a, so do it dark on the edge and then fade it in. You could do this um, in, um, and then go over the top, sorry, this is the lemon yellow. There, you can see it. Um, go over the top with the lemon yellow and bring it towards the middle, not all the way. Leaving a little bit in the middle for a shine. It's quite simple. It's, you know, it's not brilliant, but it'll do. Um... I can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, um, her face. Oh yes, the stockings. Yeah, I used to find them really exciting. Peony pink. I think it's because you get to open them first. I, I had to. Some children are given them as as a way to um. The parents like them to open them so that they can have a lion, but I am. Um, I always used to share them with my parents. They always wanted to see and watch, which I thought was nice. It was the sort of first part of the day we were all together. I'm going to give her a blue dress. I'm going to use this colour. This is the Mykonos blue. Now we've got a collar, which I don't want the same colour, all the buttons. If you go over the buttons, don't worry. What I've just planned is that they're going to be a darker blue so it means I can go over them and not worry because they're quite small I find if you're trying to colour around something small it's hard to get an even tone when you're with your pencil because you're avoiding things so it can be much neater to colour over it and then just doing all the edges extra dark um, it, yeah, it can be neat to colour over it first and then just go over it in a darker colour after. I'm going to do her hair ties the same. I'm going to try and do them a little bit darker on the edges than in the middle. And um, the darker blue. What do we got? We have got a really, really dark blue. I think we're going to have to use the denim. I'm going to sharpen it first. It's really sharp. There we go, denim blue. I remember getting a little doll in my stocking one year. No, I got dolls clothes. I didn't have the doll until I went downstairs. Just fun. Hair. Now, blonde is often, dolls often have blonde hair, but I don't think it's going to work with the crown and everything, and I'm not sure about whether I've got the right brown tone, so I think I'm going to do a black hair. Why not? Wow. I'm not going to do it really dark, I'll show you. Um, I'm going to do a light, really light layer first, really light. Don't worry about doing directional colouring, you want up at lines because it will look more like hair. I want it a little bit darker down here by the, uh, by the hair band. And then lighter towards the middle and darker under here by the crown. And lighter towards the middle, as I say, get lines in this, it looks more like proper hair. So the same here with a light touch and then darker near the hairband and darker at the bottom. Her hair is so neat, isn't it? My doll's hair is whenever neat. They um, used to get really scruffy and I used to wash their hair and then once you'd wetted it, it would go really horrible. I never cut my doll's hair though. So I remember um, some of my friends used to cut doll's hair so short. In fact 
they had long hair. I don't know why they wanted their dolls to have short hair. It's strange. Anyway, <laughs> I would have got into big trouble if I'd cut my doll's hair. Leave the collar white. I think it works because it's not surrounded by colour. But I need to think about this bow on the present. I'm going to do it in wine red, I think. I've used the wine red before and I think it's going to work quite well because it will tie in with the red here without, but it will look different because that red has been gone over with the true red. Remember that bit down there. Now for the bow, I'm going to do it lightly all over. Gnu, I just made up a word, gnu. Well, that's a type of animal, isn't it? Going to is what I should have said. Getting lazy. I'm not saying my words properly. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do while I've got this wine red out is do the berries. Remember I did the outside of the berry in wine red? And I'm going to finish that off with the true red, which I happen to have at hand. True red. And just finish them off. I think that's a different technique to what I used on the other ones. I think I started with the true red before, but anyway, never mind. There we go. So those are done. I'm just going to use the um, gel pen like I did on those. Just on the tops. Okay, we have got a lollipop and a final stocking to think about. Lollipop, I'm going to just grab the elephant grey for the handle. Just do a little bit, whole stick each side to make it look a little bit shiny. And that's it, easy. Okay, the main lollipop has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. Ooh. Oh, uh, let's just go in with some pinks and purples. Let's use three different shades and see what happens. It's got the lavender, whoops, lavender. It's not going to sit in a way that you can read it. We have got a magenta and, not that one, a lilac. So we've got three different shades. We're just going to try and see what we can do with them. So with a lolly, Make it darker in the middle and then fade it a little bit. A nice dark bit on the outside and fade it back to the middle so we've got what looks like a little bit of shine going on in the middle. Now we're going to take the magenta and we're going to do one here. So again, dark in the middle and on the outside like that. And then we're going to take our lilac. And do here like that. So we're using the same technique every time, darker on the outside and a bit of shine in the middle. Um, I think what we're going to do is put a lilac one there as well. Bear with me. And then a lavender one here. And then a magenta one here. And then we've got a mix of colours and hopefully it looks reasonably random and you don't necessarily notice that there's not an even amount of each. And we're going to use the magenta around the outside. Need to make it quite hard though because it's a lolly. It's made of a boiled sweet. It would be intense colour and shiny. Okay, there's that. Now we have our other stocking. Let me zoom in just a tad so I can see. Oh, there we go. Now, this we've got a stripy sock going on, which is quite fun. Um, I'm having a look at what colours we haven't used to try and you know, keep it balanced, as it were. I mean, it's tempting just to do red and green, but I think I won't. I think we'll do something a little bit different. Maybe orange and green yeah so this here's our orange 
And the technique we're going to use is similar to this stocking in that we want it to look full up. So actually for this bottom one, we'll probably just do it quite solid. But once we move on to our next one, we're leaving a gap. We'll put, make it harder on the edge, so more layers here and less towards the middle. It's a simple technique and hopefully will give us a little bit of um, an illusion that's full of prezzies. My husband always used to put out a sock, an actual, uh, his father's had some walking socks, they would just use those. Whereas when I was little, my mum had some fabric and she had sewn some stockings out of this fabric and she still got them. And one was orange, actually. Um, it's sort of velvety, not, not velvet. I can't think of the fabric. It's sort of velvety, but it got line. Oh, corduroy. That was it, like corduroy. And there were orange and there were some that were green. My dad always liked the green ones. It's just a good colour. And uh, so these stripes I'm going to keep to the same colours. So I'm going to do an orange one here. Oops. I'm not going to, um, I'm just going to probably do them quite solid because there wouldn't really be a sort of bulging type effect needed, I don't think. And um, I'm just trying to choose a green when I'm talking to you. Um, anyway, he always had the green and we had orange, so that's fun. I just pick up the green and drop it. I've gone for the apple green. So again, these top ones are quite solid, so nice and easy. So um, anyway, it was uh, yeah, it was always lots of fun. And you'd usually get some chocolate coins or Smarties, something like that, some sort of chocolate, and. Um, Thing really, what else? Little toys, different things. That's always good fun. I'm going to do this bit in the green. There we go. I've used a lot of colours. Um, presents. Um, let me think. We've got a flower on this one. Um, Trying to balance the colours and looking at what we've got. We haven't got a lot of pink. We've got a pink ball ball down here. And we've got the pink lollipop. So I'm thinking a pink present might be nice. Um, but I'm going to do different pinks to the ones I did up here. So I'm going to do quite a pale pink. Um, the punch pink is the, probably the, one of the palest, I think. Charmin is quite a small gift. So I'm going to just do a light layer all over the gift. Oh, I'm getting quite thirsty. I sort of missed a drink this morning because I went out for a coffee with my friend. We only had one coffee. and uh, Although she said she'd be buzzing because it was a caffeinated. I had a decaf. I don't drink caffeine or have caffeine. I like to stay calm. And of course I don't always stay calm. But having caffeine doesn't help. It makes me all jittery. I don't like it. So I put a bit of darker under the flower and around the edge, or flower or bow, whatever it is. Now I think we need to colour the ribbon. I've, I wanted to go for a purpley colour. I've used most of them already. I'm just, just grabbing another colour. This is the ultramarine blue, which is slightly purpley. I think thought that would be nice. And what I'm going to do with this is to try and make it a darker in the centre, and then fade towards the edge of the loops. Looks a bit messy at the minute, but I just wanted to do all my darker bits while I had a nice sharp pencil. It really helps. Like that. There we go. Okay. It does look quite blue actually, but that's all right. Now I am thinking about blue, that maybe this gift should be blue. And I've got a very different blue to this one. This is the peacock blue, so it's really light, and I think we'll use it here. 
So again, just a light layer. I think we might this might have been the one we used for the moon. I can't remember. Gosh, it was a long time ago when I recorded that video. But uh, that's okay. Well, actually, it was only yesterday. <laughs> it feels a long time ago. Time is passing, but I think December flies by. So around the edge and under the bow, I'm just doing a bit more, a few more layers, really. There we go. We've got the bow, and I think that might be our last little bit of this page. Um, I've got to think of the colour first, so that could take three years. And um, what goes blue? Um, what would I do if I was wrapping a present? I would do silver. Mm, should we do silver? Let's do silver. So I'm going to use the um, charcoal grey to make some silver. So um, let's start with this bit. So near the near the not just going to be darker and then fade a darker edge along here leave plenty of white for a shine same here exactly the same thing under here make it dark and leave a shine just on the edge and here i think we'll leave the shine towards the top have a little bit around everywhere I'm happy with that. Now let's zoom out and I will have a proper look and make sure, see what I've missed. Because I did those holly berries that I've missed, didn't I? Let's have a look. And you can see the mess of pencil that I've been using. Look at the state of it. So those are all the colours that I've used just for this bit of the video. Those are some of the ones I used for the other bit. Wow, what a mess. Anyway, <laughs> there's our page. I've really enjoyed colouring that one. I hope you have too if you've coloured along with me that is if not I hope you just enjoyed watching and taken away a few tips so thank you so much for watching tomorrow ah oh, I've I've missed that bit I don't know what colour to do it so I haven't done it I don't know what it is you have to look back at the book and find out what it is but I suppose it can just be done in green let's do it in green let's just grab a jungle green just, just colour it in there we go um Tomorrow I'm going to be doing some, I'm not going to be doing a Johanna Basford picture. I've run out of Johanna Basford um, ideas for Christmas at the moment. I will have a few more, but at the minute I've got some other things that I'm really looking forward to doing and sharing with you. So tune in tomorrow for those. So thank you very much for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>